Shalom, Israel. Guess. We're back for part two of rebuke of ignorance. This lesson is necessary. This testimony is necessary. It's time for tearing down all the idols, all the false prophets, everything and everyone that is anti Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Time to come down. There's no more time for playing. There's no more time for allowing the rampant ignorance and wickedness to just run free, to run its course, because it, it has run its course already. It's time to bring it all to an end. It's time for, for those of Israel that are of the one third, that are of the election, it's time for us to stand up, separate ourselves from wickedness, and to come out of all of these different constructs that we're stuck in at the moment, because we do have some of our people that are still stuck in all of these constructs. If you haven't seen the video by Brother Banayam of the Kingdom of Israel channel, I posted, I shared his video, I shared his videos regarding the seven churches of Revelation. Check them out. Also go subscribe to his channel, go check him out. It's important for us to understand the judgments of the seven churches and how they pertain to the nation. You gotta know where you fit, where you stand. What, what you can do, what you gotta do, and what your judgment is if you don't do what you're supposed to do. That's what's important in this time. It's important to understand the order of the harvest because there is an order to the harvest. If you don't understand the order of the harvest, you're gonna misconstrue a lot of things. You're gonna have a, a faulty understanding of a lot of the things that are scheduled to take place in the end time, all right? So again, Shalom, everybody. Once again, giving all praise, honor, and glory. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Wahabra Kadash. Let's get into it. So picking up from where we left off. Again, he, and I'll state he, unless I specify otherwise, I'm talking about the ruler of imbeciles, the cult leader of the radical obsolete idiots, Fathias, Ben Josh and Aya. <laughs> Fathias, Ben Josh and Aya. So he once believed, he currently, he, he currently believes that he's King David, but he once believed that everybody that was rocking with him in any fashion was in his past, a central figure of the book the Bible, and a man of the most high, man of the Lord. But if you were found to not be under his trance, a spell of Balaam, if you were found to not be idolizing him and worshiping him and trusting everything that he says and having faith in him as you would Yahweh Shai, he says, and they believe that you can cease from being so-and-so and you can cease from being of the election or the one third. That is not concrete, that it can change based on how he and they feel about you. Sounds like a bunch of women, right? Everything is about how they feel. It's not based on anything concrete or tangible or intellectual or anything true. It's about what they feel. What they feel is everything. Contrary to scripture, it is not the masculine spirit of our father. Sounds like the white man. Sounds like the devil. Hmm. So either he lied to begin with, lacked discernment, is a wicked, filthy blasphemer that arrogantly thinks he can dictate who belongs to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, based on his own pride and ignorance, or all of the above. I'll go to all of, with all of the above, right? So he doesn't have the fruit of the spirit, which is obvious. He doesn't follow the most highest commandments. 
doesn't love Israel sincerely and has no problem bearing false witness. No problem. Do they care? Nope, because they're just like them. Because they are his fruit. They are his fruit. They're just like him. So he believes if you question what our enemies taught us, you're wicked. You and your children should die. Your daughters are now whores and your sons are now gay and you have an, incest, an ancestral homosexual relationship with them. Sounds like women. When you don't agree with them or they once they get mad at you, they go to shame and language. Shame and language, shame and insults. That's what women resort to when they get mad at you, when their feelings get hurt. So, you know, I ghosted them. So I treat I ghosted them like like a raggedy bitch. So they they definitely hate me. I didn't give them a chance to throw me out. I walked the fuck away. That hurts. And I defied their their leader. That hurts. Right? The leader said, hate him, walk away from him, run from him. He's wicked. And so they did so without questioning. Not one person said, well, why? That was a good brother, man. All he did was show love. That's all he did. That's all he did. I I rallied for, for everybody to try to follow and support other brothers' channels and support their videos. Not my own. I didn't beat on my chest for people to follow me and listen to me. I did it for other brothers because I follow every other brother who had a channel and he was trying to push the word. I followed him. I was the consistent follower. I liked every video, commented on everyone to help out their algorithms. All of them. And I tried to get other people to support and do the same thing for them. I was showing real love, real love. I had a bunch of real love for, for, uh, for people who had nothing but fake love for me, nothing but envy and animosity secretly in their heart for me. And it showed all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Baha Shemi Shai for exposing it. I appreciated it. I definitely appreciate that. Boy, getting, getting that out of my way, getting that out of my life, pulling me away from that. You know what I mean? I didn't go after I fell out with them. I unsubscribed from their channels, but I didn't go trying to take away likes. I didn't go to anybody's channels trolling or nothing. I just walked away from everything and everybody. I didn't watch a single person's videos after I left. Not Fat Thias, not any of his followers. I didn't watch anybody's videos. The only reason why I know anything about what they've been saying is because I have other brothers who, who, who have come out of the group, who follow and still paid attention. And I have brothers who are still in the group or still there and they're scared to come out. They're scared to come out because they've been convinced that he is Kev, uh, KD, that he is King David, and that he is the way, he's the door, and that they got to go through him. If they, they're scared to depart from him because they think their salvation is tied to him. So they're scared. This is the reason why I had to do these videos. This is for y'all, brothers. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for hitting me up and still showing me some love. You're doing it in secret, but you're doing it anyway, and that's okay. Well, it was okay, but now it's time for you to stand up like men. It's time for you to decide, get off the fence. You can't be on the fence anymore. Have no fellowship with darkness and evil and wicked men. It's time for you to decide. It's time for this to be pronounced to you so that you can have no cloak for your sin. The Most High wants you to know that you are in error so that you have no cloak for your sin. You can no longer say, I didn't know. Now you're being held accountable because now you know you got to come out. You got to come out. It's not enough to just still be cool with me, still be down with me on the on, on the on the sneak on the secret tip. You gotta you gotta break away. You gotta trust in the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai that you don't need to be trusting in a man for your salvation. That your salvation is not tied to him. It's not tied to that group. But your damnation is tied to that group. It is tied to him. See how that works? See how that works? Okay. So I'm an agent. 
because I believe we have to question everything we were taught by people that we call devils and know to be liars. Who is the agent? Again, like I asked before, he who questions the enemy or he who went to war with righteous Israelites to protect the enemy's honor and corruption. Now tell me, Yahweh said, we have to become like children to enter the kingdom. That means willing to learn from scratch, unlearn and relearn, open to new information and understanding. See, children question everything. Always why? Why? Why this? Why that? Why do we do this? Why that? They always question. And that's why he says, we, in order to get into the kingdom, we have to become like children. So me asking questions and saying, man, we should put everything that enemies taught us under the microscope and make it part of intellectual daily conversation is to try to investigate everything that they taught us and see what we come up with. That, that made me wicked. I didn't say anything against the Holy Spirit. No blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. No blasphemy against Yahweh or Yahweh Shai. No blasphemy against our people. None of that. I said, let's question the enemies and everything they taught us. Let's, let's see if they lied to us about geography. And that made me a wicked, a wicked Israelite that deserved death. Right? So even if I was wrong about what I think or, or was pondering, the truth is, the truth, the truth is about what we've been taught about geography. It wasn't worthy of the hate. It, so, like I said, if I was if I was incorrect about about what I thought the truth is, or was about what we've been taught, it wasn't worthy of the hate. It wasn't worthy of the slander and the lies and the evil that followed. See, that was all because that was in, but it did. It it ensued because of what was always in their hearts the whole time. They were they were lying, smiling faces. They tell lies. One minute, shalom. Uh, I love you. Uh, and the next minute, they like women, they hate you, hate your guts because you disagree with them. You said something they didn't agree with. It should have been an intellectual discussion and agree or disagree respectfully as brothers. But the wickedness came out. The wickedness came out. I mean, seriously, how do you go from saying I love you Ak, every day to I can't wait to get spiritual power so I can kill you and your children? Because I suggested we look into if we were deceived about geography. That's fucking crazy. That's fake fucking love. If they had fake love for me, if they had fake love for the other brothers, they got fake love for you too that are in there. If at any point you say or do anything that they don't agree with, they will turn on you and eat you. That's not real love. That should make you want to get the fuck away from there. They revealed their character. And you stay. You see it and you stay. Either you're in fear, like some of the brothers are who I know for a fact, they've admitted to me, they're scared to leave. Or you're wicked too. Right? So I presented a stumbling block. I prayed on it. The Most High told me I didn't just do it anything haphazardly. I prayed on it. It was on me for a while. And then he finally told me to do it. He finally said, okay, do it. Do it. So I presented a stumbling block to make the wicked reveal themselves. Because I discerned the truth. And I didn't like what I saw. All to protect their cult leader from being questioned or made to look bad for not knowing, lying, or being ignorant. Amazing. So he convinced his cult that they're to listen to him only because he has all the truth. The Most High gave him everything. He's the whole body and the only one given any knowledge, wisdom, or understanding. The scriptures don't support that. But you're to trust him and not the word of the most high. That's how he rolls. That's how he rolls. He, he relies on the ignorance of his followers and the fact that they're evil and wicked just like him. They can't come out because the most high won't let them. They've been given a wicked shepherd who's going to lead them to the end 
that they deserve. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Basha and Yahweh Shah. I pray every day for the destruction of my enemies. And he deals with you. He deals with them. Some of you. He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna deal with you in a different way. He's gonna allow you to be around and to be able to see, to see that you are not who you think you are in the time to come. He's gonna show you. You're gonna watch when 144,000 are taken out of here. You're gonna watch, you're gonna see. You're gonna watch when the one third are taken out of here. You're gonna see it and you're gonna know that you didn't fall into either one of those groups and the heartbreak and the realization that you are one of the two thirds is gonna hit you. It's gonna be too late. It's gonna be too late. So how does it make sense that his 100 or so men of the 144,000 and the men of the one third are gonna give life to the remaining 144,000 that he claimed are not here on the earth right now in the end time. If the 144,000 are the first fruits, y'all get that? The 144,000 are the first fruits, meaning the first to ripen, the first to be ready. The first of the spirits. The first. So how do they come after? It doesn't make sense. They're supposed to be the verse that are ready at harvest time. But they say that they're going to give birth to them after the harvest. Huh? Huh? Wow. So... The 144,000 will all be here. They are all here in the end. This is the end. We know it. The 144,000 have to all be here. Have to all be here. Otherwise, this ain't the end. If they're not, if, we're, if the 144,000 are not all here right now, then this is not the end. We're a long way away from the end. That's what that means. Right? So they're all here and will be redeemed, a.k.a. taken from the earth before the great earthquake, which occurs during the hour of temptation, a.k.a. the day of the Lord's wrath. Let's stay in Revelation. Let's go to Revelation chapter three real quick. Let's begin at verse seven. Revelation chapter three, verse seven. Message to Philadelphia. You ever wonder why the city of Philadelphia is called the city of brotherly love? Where did that come from? It comes from the scriptures. The church of Philadelphia is the church of brotherly love. The church of Philadelphia is the lamb's wife. It's the 144,000. Those who were told to operate in, in brotherly love to love one another. So you would know who the 144,000 are, who, the, who belong to the church of Philadelphia by their fruit, those who exhibit the brotherly love. You would know who the disciples of Yahweh Shai are by those who exhibit the brotherly love. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples when you have love one to another. Roughly paraphrasing. You're supposed to know Who's who by their fruit? Revelation chapter three, verse seven. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key, the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet 
and to know that I have loved thee. So this is Yahweh Shai talking to this church. This is the only church that he says he's going to cause them who are of the synagogue of Satan to come and worship at their feet to show that I have loved thee because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Listen, he's telling these people, because you have kept the word of my patience, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation, meaning the 144,000 are not gonna go through the hour of temptation, okay? They're gonna be taken out of the earth before then, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. How are you gonna be flipping over Japhites to go kill the two thirds if, if you are the, the 144, like you believe you are, if you're gonna be kept from the hour of temptation, you're gonna be pulled out of here. You're not even gonna be around. While the two thirds are being killed, you're not even gonna be on the earth if you're of the 144,000. How are you flipping over Japhites to get to the two thirds? Hmm? How? How are you doing it? Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. That's what I'm doing. I know he's coming quickly, and I'm holding fast to that which I have, that no man can take my crown. I'm going to get out of that man worship, following men. They'll cause you to lose your crown. Your, your cult leader, he's taking your crown from you. But he, can, no, he can't take your crown from you, literally because the Most High will not allow the elect to actually be deceived. The elect will never lose their crown. It's impossible for them to lose their crown. The Most High will separate you from whatever it is that, will, that, that is not pleasing to him. He will remove it from you or remove you from it. He will lead you in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my power and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my power and the name of the city of my power, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my power. See, because they're taken out. They gotta be, they gotta be taken out of the earth in order to come down from heaven. You gotta be taken out. And they're gonna be taken out before the hour of temptation. They're gonna be saved from it. They're not gonna be here at that time. They're gonna go into the bridal chamber And I will write upon him my new name. Because when you get married, the woman takes the man's, the man, the man's name. So the lamb's wife, the bride, 144,000 are going to be taken out of here, going to the bridal chamber. The marriage is going to take place. They're going to come back down out of heaven with his new name written upon them because the marriage will have taken place. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Not everybody's going to hear this because not everybody has an ear to hear. That's why the reason why he says this is because everybody can't hear this. Everybody can't receive it. That's why he specifies he that hath an ear, not an actual physical ear. He that has an ear of understanding, the spirit on them, spirit of truth on them. Let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. Revelation chapter four, verse one. After this, I looked and behold, the door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither and I will show thee things which must be here, must be hereafter. See, he was called up like the 144,000 were called up. Come up hither. He ascended into heaven like the 144,000 will ascend into heaven. Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the most high entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. This is talking to the 144,000. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. 
Oh yeah. I know I'm up 144,000 and it's going to be a fearful day when you guys realize who you went astray of, who you spoke evil of, who you moved your tongue against, you dogs. When you see, when you beho behold the 144,000 ascending up to heaven in the cloud, you're going to get to witness it. Those of you who, who don't die or get stricken with any plague or disease, you're going to get the heartbreak of witnessing the real 144,000 ascending up to heaven in the cloud. And you're going to be one of those enemies that behold them. And the same hour, the hour of temptation, was there a great earthquake. And the 10th part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men, 7,000. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the heavenly father. The remnant were affrighted. Why were they affrighted? Because they witnessed this great event take place. They witnessed 144,000 being taken out of here. You're going to witness. See, because some of you are not two thirds. Some of you are the remnant. You think you're of the 144,000. That's why you're going to be scared because you're not gonna know what's happening to you because you think you're the 144,000. And when you see the 144,000 taken out of here, you're gonna be scared because you don't understand the order of the harvest. You think all of Israel are gonna be taken out of here at one time. You don't know that it's the 144,000 that gets taken out of here. So when you see the 144,000 ascending up to heaven in a cloud, you're gonna believe you're missing the boat. You're gonna believe, oh, that's that's all of the Israel, that's, Everybody who, who belongs to the most high being taken out of here and I'm still here. I'm one of the two thirds. You may be, or you may just be one of the one third. But that's why the remnant will be affrighted. You guys err, not knowing the scripture and you don't follow anyone else, but your fearful leader. So you don't get to get edification from anywhere else. You're limited to his understanding. You're, you're only going to know as much as he knows. See, because none of you are being led in the spirit. So the most high isn't dealing with you. You're not being taught anything via the spirit. You're being taught via him. Revelation chapter 14. Let's get it. Verse one. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion on the Mount Zion, that's 144,000. And with him, 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. The father's name is not written in everyone's forehead. It's not written in the foreheads of all the one third. It's written in the head of the 144,000. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne before the throne because 144,000 are taken out of the earth and they go to where Yahawashai is. They go before the throne, right? And before the four beasts and the elders and no man can learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. You hear that? Redeemed from the earth meaning saved out of the earth, taking out. They were taken out. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. The lamb's bride follows him wherever, wherever he goes. If you're following man, you're not following the lamb. If you're not following the commandments of Yahweh Shai, you're following the commandments of men, you're not following the lamb whithersoever he goeth. If you're allowing a man to make you not follow the commandments of Yahweh Shai, you are not following the lamb whithersoever he goeth. This does not apply to you. You are not of the 144,000. You are not one of the elect. These were redeemed from among men. See that saved, taken away from men, being the first fruits. See, the 144,000 are the first fruits. The one third isn't the first fruits. The 144,000 are the first fruits. Being the first fruits unto the heavenly father, and to the lamb, the 144,000 get taken out of here before the great tribulation begins. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault 
before the throne of the Most High. No guile, no trickery, no lies, no deceit, no false prophesying, no guile, without fault, without spot, without blemish. You're walking around here being wicked and evil to Israel. Most High loves Israel, even those that pissed him off. That's why they're going to get to come back. He does not want you walking around here being evil and vengeful and unmerciful towards Israel. If he is merciful towards all of us, what makes you think you're allowed to show no mercy to his children that he showed mercy to? How do you, how do you think that works? How do you think you get to be better than him or get to have rights that he doesn't execute? Do things that he himself don't even do. Every son, every, all sons strive to be like their father. But you, you guys are not striving to be like the father because he's not your father, right? Y'all don't have his spirit within you. You have not been changed and converted and made like him. He does not abide with you. So you are not like him. You're like the son of perdition. You're like these devils. And you will share the recompense of the wicked. Bottom line. Let's go back really quick. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. You know, that woman is the nation of Israel. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, in pain to be delivered. On one hand, I know you're thinking, that's your house shy. You're right. But that's not it. The Most High is, is, is great. He deals in double and triple entendres. In this case, the child also refers to the 144,000. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great dragon, a great red dragon having seven heads and 10 horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth the man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto the heavenly father and to his throne, caught up. Like 144,000 would get caught up to the Heavenly Father and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness. See, fled into the wilderness. How you know this is the end time, right? This is not a long time ago. This is not Yahushai that they were talking about. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared of the Most High, that they should feed her there 1,203 score days. That's that three and a half years in the wilderness where the 144,000 is gonna be feeding the woman, the nation of Israel, the one third. When they come back after the marriage, there would be ministering angels to the nation in the wilderness. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan was deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our power, and the power of his Mashiach, see, future, future events, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our power day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he, hath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast, Unto the earth, he persecuted the woman 
which brought forth the man child. So this is him going after the rest of the Israelites that are left after the 144,000 are taken out of here. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. That she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. This is them in the wilderness, right? And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. So they're gonna, they're gonna come after those that remain after 144,000 are taken out and the, the one third are carried into the land. There's gonna be a small number. It's gonna be a, a, a remnant of the one third that are still left here. And these people are gonna come after them. That was gonna come after them, right? That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Those troops, all of those people that are gonna come after him. And the earth helped the woman. That's the great earthquake. That's the earthquake that happens during the hour of temptation. That great earthquake we read about, this is what this means. The earth helped the woman and the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of the heavenly father and have the testimony of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. It's important to understand how things happen, the order, decently and in order, right? You know, Israel likes to say that, but have no real conscious, conscious of it, right? No real understanding of what that entails and what it means exactly. You know, they just have a bunch of things that they like to repeat, right? Okay, let's continue on in the scripture. Let's go to Proverbs, all right? Let's get Proverbs chapter 25. And we're gonna start at verse six. <clears throat> Proverbs 25 and six. Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king and stand not in the place of great men. Listen, this is important for you guys to get because a lot of you guys are guilty of this. Put not forth thyself, meaning don't elevate yourself. Don't elevate yourself. Don't make yourself higher than you ought to be. Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to, right? Put not forth thyself in the presence of the king and stand not in the place of great men. What does that mean? Well, great men, there's 144,000. You all are, are calling yourself 144,000, but you don't have the fruit of the spirit. You are not the lamb's bride. You are proven to not be who you think you are. And the scripture is telling you, put, stand not in the place of great men. Stand not in the place of the 144,000. Don't put yourself in the place of the 144,000. For better it is that it be said unto thee, come up hither. Who gets told come up hither? The 144,000. See, for better it is that it be said unto thee, come up hither, meaning it's better to wait to be called up than to place yourself where you're not supposed to be. Then that thou shouldest be put lower in the presence of the prince whom thine eyes have seen. That's what's gonna happen when they put lower. You think you're of the 144,000. You're gonna witness the 144,000 being told, come up hither, and you're not gonna be part of that group. You're gonna be put lower in the presence of the prince, whom thine eyes have seen, right? Go not forth hastily to strive. Is that not what happened? You guys went hastily, you guys went forth hastily to strive against, against me and the other brothers. Hastily to strive against me and my family. Had big shit to say about my children. That if you were in my face, I'd have, I'd have slapped the thoughts out of your mouth before you said it. But because it's the internet, everybody's a tough guy. So you guys all raced to go forth hastily to strive. Nobody took the time to think for themselves, to try to go study, to try to go look at what I was talking about, to even contemplate and say, is, is what he said worth this reaction? Is him saying that we should consider whether or not we relied about geography worth all of this evil that's been thrown at him and his children? 
what has that brother, I mean, really? He was just a brother for like a, a good long while. But y'all went forth hastily to strive. Didn't even consider the implications and the fact that there might be trouble for that action, for doing this. That's why I didn't know. That's why I held my tongue because I know better. See, I have the fruit of the spirit. I walk according to the spirit. I walk according to the scriptures. Go not forth hastily to strive. It took me months. These people went, began talking shit about me within minutes. It took me months to finally come and say something to them because I, I let the most high work and talk to me and reveal to me. I waited for him to reveal to me 100% who people are before I went against them. Because I know for a fact, if you go against his people, if you speak evil of the election, speak evil of the one third, there's a price to pay. I had to wait until he showed me that these people were not that. And that it was okay, not just okay, but I've been given the directive to open my mouth now and to be used as his avatar, his mouthpiece, because that's what his men are for. It's time for righteous rebuke. So get this work. All right, go not forth hastily to strive. Lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof, when thy neighbor has put thee to shame. And oh yeah, that's what's happening in this video series. You went forth hastily to strive, but you didn't have any idea what was gonna happen in the end of it all. Me, your neighbor, oh yeah, I'm about to put you to shame. That's what's happening here. You shall be put to shame. And if you are of the right spirit, if you do belong to the most high, then you will repent, you will convert, you will see the error of your ways and you will change. But if you are not one of his, you're gonna stubbornly hold fast to your ignorance and your wickedness. And you're gonna descend further into shame and darkness. And you're gonna be worthy of the recompense that you're gonna receive. Verse nine, debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself. If you had an issue with me, fat thighs, you should have got at me yourself. You should have bypassed all your flunkies and said, let me go talk to that man. Let me talk to that man. If you thought I was in error, if I was once your brother and you thought I was in error, you should have said, let me save my brother. Let me try to save him from himself. You weren't supposed to, to turn evil against me and to want me dead and try to kill me because I said, because I said something that was an error. If it was an error, you're supposed to teach me secretly, come to me and try to edify me and talk to me. That's what you were supposed to do. That's what you would have done if you had the fruit of the spirit. If you were one of the 144,000, that's what you would have done. If you were one of the men of the Lord, that's what you would have done. But you didn't do it because you couldn't do it because the spirit wouldn't let you because you didn't have it. You were not being led by the spirit. You were being led by your own evil imaginations. Speaking of being led by your own evil imaginations, a lot of dudes in that group were constantly talking about how they were fighting demons and shit. If you're a man of the Lord, you're not supposed to be fighting demons because we're his portion. He has control over us. He gives, he gives everybody else that don't belong to him over to, to, to wicked devices. He gives them over to other principalities and powers to rule over them and to lead them astray. That's what he does. But when you belong to him, he will not allow you to be led astray. He governs you. His will has to be done. He will not allow righteous men to do anything that is not pleasing to him. He won't allow you to think, say, nor do anything that's not pleasing to him. He won't let you say, think, or do anything that will cause him to be upset with you and have to chastise you for it. He won't let you do it. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself. No, you have to go and try to do videos, multiple videos I hear about me and my children multiple videos about other brothers who are no longer in a group. Brothers who try to come and 
they try to come and talk to you and, and, and try to reach out and, and, and ask for mercy. And when they want it back in the group, I didn't want no, no more parts of you. I just walked off. I just walked off and said, pardon my back. You dig what I'm saying? But they, they tried to come in and plead and for mercy and love. And he said, fuck your, your love. Fuck your, your olive branch. Fuck your peace treaty. I want to kill you. That's what you said. Ooh, that's the fruit of the spirit. That's the most high spirit dwelling within you. That's what he said. That was the most high directive. That's how he told you to conduct yourself. Nope. Nope. Something else was leading you. Discover not a secret to another. But that's what y'all did. That's what y'all do. Bunch of gossiping bitches. Contrary to the scriptures at every turn. Contrary to the scriptures. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself and discover not a secret to another. Lest he that heareth it put thee to shame and thy infamy turn not away. Oh yeah, I heard it. I heard it. Via other people. Shout out to the brothers who didn't mind being double agents and being over there in that group. I wish you guys would come out and just stop being silent. Come out, because your silence is compliance. It's compliance, and it makes you, it makes you uh, uh, equally guilty because you're gassing the machine. You're gassing the machine. Quit putting your tokens in the machine. Quit playing that game. Come out. Yeah, your infamy is not going to be turned away. It's time for shame to come upon you, upon you false prophets and upon you wicked devils masquerading as men of the Lord. Verse 14. Whoso boasteth himself of a false gift is like clouds and wind without rain. There's a whole lot of that going on in that group. A lot of boasting yourselves of false gifts. None of you are being led by the Holy Spirit. None of you. Verse 18. A man that beareth false witness, you fucking liars. Against his neighbor is a maul and a sword and a sharp arrow. Whole lot of that going on. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. And you're going to find that. You guys are going to find this to be absolute truth all of you confident but you're unfaithful you're unfaithful you're unfaithful to yahweh shai and, and yahweh you're faithful to your cult leader to your camp leaders and shit but you're not you're not faithful to yahweh bahashim yahweh shai so you're unfaithful man you you're idolaters and the great time of trouble is at hand it's coming and your confidence your confidence is going to do you no good. It's going to be like a broken tooth. Good for nothing. A foot out of joint. Good for nothing. Useless to you. Your confidence is useless to you. Better believe it. So, again, let's look over here. It's unfaithful. That's what. to act treacherously, deceitfully, or deal treacherously, to act or deal treacherously, faithlessly, deceitfully, or to offend. Yeah, that's you guys, for sure, for sure. So, your cult leader doesn't believe in following Yahweh Shai's commandments if they don't align with his agenda. Oh, he knows them. I know that he knows them because he talks about them. He speaks of them, but doesn't follow them. He doesn't walk it like he talked it. That's hypocrisy, AKA the leaven of the Pharisees. You know them by their fruits. They can't hide. You're supposed to be able to see them. But you guys don't have the spirit of discernment. You can't see your leader for what he is, your master for what he is. No spirit of discernment for you. This is the season of revelation. Everything and everyone is being revealed. 
bottom line. See, he adds and subtracts from the word. That's what he does habitually. Habitually adds and subtracts from the word. Deuteronomy chapter four, verse two. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of Yahweh your power, which I command you. Hmm. You shall not. It's the father said he shouldn't do it, and you watch him do it. So it's unrighteousness. Doing anything contrary to what the father says to do is unrighteousness. You're supposed to know it. You're supposed to have no dealings with anybody that does it. Deuteronomy chapter 12, 30 and 32. What things soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Bottom line. You don't add to the word. You don't diminish from it. You live by what the Most High said. You don't say, well, I know what he says, but let me tell you what it meant, though. You're not supposed to do that. Yeah, yeah, I know it says 144,000, but he really meant, though, was that it's going to be about 100 or so. You know, he'd be tripping sometime. Mm. Ouch. Ouch. So. Big boy, he, he you know, he, he boasts of gluttony. It's one thing to, to just be a glutton, but it's another to pridefully boast of it. That's a thing completely different, right? To boast of it is horrible. Let's get Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs 23 and 20. Be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. That's a riotous, riotous eaters of flesh. That's a that's a gluttony. Right? That, that's a person who indulges in gluttony. That's him. He said, well, the word says, be not among them. Be not among wine bibbers. Your, your toy general cut far. Is a wine bibber, a known drunk. Talks about doing things decently in order, but gets in your little meetings, fucking drunk. Drunk. Supposedly a general trying to lead men, but comes into his meetings. Drunk. Chewing his tobacco. Chewing your tobacco. You tobacco chewing fucking wine bibber. Yep, that's you. That's you. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty. Your, 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 your toy general and your cult leader shall come to poverty and drowsiness shall clothe the man with rags. Let's get 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. If you got a, a problem with, with eating, you're under the power of the flesh. You're subject to the flesh. You can't control your eating habits. You are under the power of your flesh. If you can't stop drinking, if you can't drink in your own time, chew your tobacco in your own time and not do it when you're supposed to be having a meeting of the so-called righteous, you're under, power, under the power of your flesh. One, you shouldn't still be chewing your tobacco. If the Most High has made his abode with you, he changes you. And the thing is, he won't make his abode with you if you have not changed. 
If you are still the filthy vessel you were in the beginning, he does not make his abode with you. His spirit will not dwell with you. He will not come into a filthy, dirty, unrighteous vessel. He will not. The Holy Spirit will not abide with you. It will not. That's how you know that the Holy Spirit is not with your general. That's how you know the Most High and Yahweh Shai are not with your general. He's a filthy vessel. If the 144,000 are who the Most High and Yahweh Shai will dwell in, the temple made without hands, do you think that the Most High and Yahweh Shai and the Holy Spirit will dwell in a man that has a filthy fucking tobacco chewing habit, drinks to excess, and speaks filthily all the day long? Negative. If you believe that, you don't know the father or his son. You err, not knowing the scriptures. You have no relationship with the power. That's the bottom line. Let's get Philippians. Chapter three, beginning at verse 18. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Hamashiach whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly. Carnal, carnal men, a gluttony is a carnal man. His God is his belly and whose glory is in their shame. His glory is in his shame. The shame of being a false prophet. He glories in being a false prophet and leading people astray who mind earthly things, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. We look for the Savior. The Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach, not man, not your cult leader, not your camp leader, no man. The Savior, the Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Oh, he's going to change our vile bodies. But there's a process. There's a process and you have to be led by the Holy Spirit in order to go through that process that leads to the changing of the vile, the vile body, AKA the receiving of spiritual power and immortality. And it's obvious that many of you are not being led by the spirit. So your hope of being changed is in vain. It's in vain. Your hopes are in vain. You're not who you think you are. It's going to be a great and terrible day for you to realize that you're not who you think you were. The whole time you've been waiting on spiritual power so you can do something to somebody. And it's not going to come. You're going to find yourselves getting trampled and killed in the great tribulation. The most high will reckon with you. Proverbs 28. Come on. Let's try to get more specific. Come on. Let's go. Oh, see. 
Hey, nothing but the spirit. Because I'm looking down at the time right now and noticing this is the time when I wanted to stop. It's amazing. At the exact time I said I wanted to stop is the time that started to act up. Ain't nothing but the most high. That means rolling in the spirit. I'm supposed to stop at this time. And I'm obedient to the spirit. I learned to watch for the signs. I learned to watch for the signs. So I will cut this here. I was going to go a little longer. But no, I will cut this right here and pick that up. That's what's up. All praise, honor, and glory to you. Hallelujah, Hashem, I was sitting here thinking, should I continue with this or should I start with this verse to begin my next video? And see, the decision was made for me. It was made for me. All right, see, most of you don't even understand about watching signs and being led by the Spirit and being shown because when you're not when you're not being led by the Spirit, you have no idea how the Spirit leads you. You don't have no idea what it feels like or what it looks like. No idea. But I do. And I'm obedient. I'm an obedient son. That's why my life is great. I suffer nothing ill in my life. Everything about my life is great. All praise, honor, and glory to you. I don't boast of anything of myself. I boast of the goodness of my Lord, my master, Shai, and my father, through whom I receive all that I have who deals with me abundantly in every facet of my life. I have nothing, nothing that I lack, need, or have to complain about. Nothing, nothing at all. So this will conclude part two of the rebuke of ignorance. All right? While I'm speaking to the rulers of imbeciles, and to the radical obsolete idiots that follow them. All right. I will get back with you for part three shortly. Grace, peace, mercy, and many blessings be until the election. Shalom, Israel. Stay blessed.